there's a stop sign here a lot of good visibility i'm slowing down nobody's around why do i need to stop i don't bike blogger here on my way to work rainy day today or hopefully not the rain just stopped well it's sort of stopped it's sprinkling just a little bit i think um topic of the day stop is yield What is stop is yield? Very simply, stop is yield is treat a stop sign as a yield sign. Now this particularly makes sense, I think, in a country like the United States. Particularly in residential areas like this, where there's not a lot of traffic, there's not you know, if there's a blind spot, you really gotta stop. Like here, there's a little bit of a blind stop. Of, bleh, stop. A little bit of a blind spot. So I could, I'm gonna go straight here. A little bit of a blind spot. So you gotta slow down more. But the idea behind stop is yield. Is that a bicycle is a momentum machine. And... People who aren't bike commuters just don't understand that. You can't expect them to understand that. Because they're not out there doing it. They're in the car, listening to the radio, talking on the phone, texting while driving, or whatever. Us bike commuters, we gotta be a lot more aware. Everybody ought to be aware. But I don't really wanna make this a, you know, bike versus car thing. Uh, but it's true, a bike is not a car. A bike is a human propelled, non-motorized machine, momentum machine. So the way I see it, it's a different mode of transportation. And bike commuters ought to have more rights, more privileges on the road than a typical private, privately owned and operated vehicle, uh, motor vehicle. Because um, there's different types of vehicles on the road you know it's not just someone getting to work on their in their car you know there's a uh, taxi cab let's go straight here there's uh commercial trucks and these are not cars trucks commercial trucks are not cars they have less rights than other people by that i mean they have more rules so it's not even a it's not even a stop sign there. See, that almost, it seems like there almost should be a stop sign there. But I don't think there was coming from that way. But I still slowed down. You know, bike commuting is both an art and a skill. And stop is yield, I think, is sensible. It's reasonable. It encourages cyclists to stay off of the really busy roads with all the distracted drivers. But don't get me wrong, you gotta learn how to ride with the rest of the traffic. And you are traffic, by the way, as a bike commuter. Um, but, you know, I think it just makes good sense um, to treat all these stop signs, which are used obscenely in my country, especially, again, in residential areas, um, as traffic calming devices. Now the same guy who invented the stop sign invented the roundabout, uh, which often are used with yield signs. And that makes so much more sense as a traffic calming device, or a speed bump, or an island of some sort, or you know, uh, 
street diets, maybe. In other words, making the streets more narrow. I know a lot of people don't like that idea, though. <laughs> um, I'm not a devout bike uh, vehicular cyclist. You know, I don't blindly follow all the rules of the road, nor am I a strong advocate for all cycling infrastructure. And that includes like bike lanes and, uh, you know, trails and all this other stuff. I'm using a trail now. It's nice. It doesn't, it, it's part of my commute, but it doesn't get me all the way from point A to point B. I do like it, you know. It would be sort of cool, I think, to have a trail to go from my house all the way to my work without having to stop, without, uh, you know, in, in engaging with uh, encountering uh, other traffic on the road, but you gotta learn how to deal with that. Now, why do people not like the idea of stop as yield? Treat stop signs as yield signs for bikes. I'm not talking about motor vehicles. I'm not talking about, you know, a 2,000 pound car. You know, who, that's usually traveling over the speed limit, even though they're not supposed to. Cyclists, you know, we can't generally go over the speed limit unless we're going down a hill. And it makes good sense to have stop signs at the bottom of hills, you know. You don't want to be flying through those. Um, but uh, I think the I think the reason why people are scared about adopting such a rule or a privilege for bikes to treat stop signs as yield signs. What the heck is that? Are they cutting trees over there? I gotta get off this. I need to get onto the street. Now, the reason why people don't like it is because they're worried about children. They're worried about, you know, scaff laws. Is that how you pronounce it? People who are going to take advantage of the situation just start blowing through all the stop signs. Um, and, and believe me, it's if you've been around for any length of time, it's all political. You know, it's very political. Um, why a stop sign is installed? It, it makes usually, like I said, in my country, it's overused. The stop sign. Uh, it's an abused traffic device. By that I mean it's abused because it's installed too much everywhere. And it's abused because, you know, people, you often see motorists do rolling stops anyway. So it is already sort of treated as a yield sign in a sense by, well, at least from my uh, observation, almost everybody. You know, you don't often see a complete stop um, unless there's other traffic around and stop is yield does not mean you know you just you treat it as a stop sign when you know there's a lot of busy you know traffic going on around the intersection you got to treat it as a stop sign at that point if a car is approaching the intersection and you are approaching an intersection on a bike then you need to stop Assess the situation, take your time a little bit. Here it's very busy, so you know. I'm gonna wait till I see an opening. And this one right here. It's gonna be a little tricky, let's get over again. Alright. Alright, so now let's get in the left turn lane. Maybe we can make this light, maybe not. Oh well. I might cut this segment here so you don't have to watch me sitting here all the time. I do not see a lot of bike commuters around where I live. Uh, I am very much a minority on the road. And as a minority on the road, you gotta really be assertive and uh, you gotta bend the rules sometimes. Uh, just the way things go. Now, stop is yield is based off, the idea of it 
is written into law in a state in the United States. That is the state of Idaho, believe it or not. It's sort of a rural state in the West. Um, and part of the law says treat a stop sign as a yield sign unless you see a car approaching the intersection uh, or it's a blind spot or there's pedestrians around or whatever. I'll have a link in the description below about the full text on that. The second part of it says treat stoplights as stop signs, which means you can go through a red light if, uh, you know, it's not, you know, you've got to use common sense. If it's a really busy intersection, you're not going to go through a red light. But, uh, you know, in a rural state like Idaho, you know, if there's like not a lot of cars around at the intersection, just proceed forward, you know, it's all about being efficient on the road. Hopefully this light's gonna go green here. Here we go. Gotta be careful when it's wet out here too. A little dangerous and I don't wanna fall in the intersection. Now, there are places who have allowed cyclists to um, go through red lights. Particularly recently, the city of Paris, France, France, uh, they, they allow certain intersections for cyclists to go through the red lights. Basically, it's just, I think, pretty much to make the job a little easier for traffic police. Because, you know, there are probably people doing it all the time. And, you know, it's like, come on, this is sort of ridiculous. And that's why, you know, People hate scaff laws, right? Scaff laws, scaff laws. Um, now it's not for every intersection like I said. And now, in particular, going through a red light in Paris, they only let you do it as long as you can stay next to the curb. What do I mean by that? Now I'm talking about like a T intersection where you on a bike are traveling through the intersection and you're always on the outer perimeter of the intersection. Or you're making a turn and you're not having to cross through the mental, uh, me mental? <laughs> middle of the intersection. So basically, these aren't major intersections I'm talking about here. And if you need to make a big turn, you know, get completely through the intersection, you still gotta wait with traffic. Uh, you gotta stop and everything. Now here's a good example of stop is yield. There's a stop sign here. A lot of good visibility. I'm slowing down. Nobody's around. Why do I need to stop? I don't realistically, practically, reasonably, I don't need to stop. And it's to my advantage not to because I'm on a momentum machine. It uses so much energy to stop and re-accelerate again. Especially if you're carrying a lot of cargo. Uh, want a good workout, go ahead and do it. Now here I am getting onto a bigger road. I guess we'll call it a bigger road. So I'm gonna slow down a lot more just to be absolutely safe. But I mean, you've seen, if you've been watching me for any amount of time, I've always sort of practiced this stop is yield to varying degrees. A lot of times I almost come to a complete stop and I'll put my foot down, unclip on my clipless pedals. Not doing it right now, but let's go back this way. But it just makes so much sense. Uh, so yeah, always, always look before you change lane position. Uh, I don't really advise filtering through traffic, but I understand it in major cities around the world. Um, I do not live in a major city, you know, a world, you know, sized major city, so I don't have to filter through traffic. There isn't that much traffic, but I can understand why a lot of people do it major cities around the world. It can be a little dangerous, so I'd watch that door zone, but 
always look always signal use your hand signals if you can you know move your hand away from the brake levers for just a little bit so people know what you're doing they can uh, predict what you're gonna do that helps everybody out communication is key uh, use bright lights <laughs> do as I say not as I do I don't have my my front light on so uh, let's go ahead and turn on there it goes it's not going to show up really good uh, on camera because it's you know bright I mean, it's not really bright but it's daytime outside right now you should always have your lights on uh, keep them charged as well uh, again pre be predictable ride in a straight line ride with the rest of the traffic don't ride against traffic try not to ride on the sidewalk you know if uh Sometimes the situation requires it or it just doesn't make any sense to uh, do that, you know. But, uh, yeah, this guy wants to pass me. I'm going to get over it just a little bit. Oh, good, he's gone. Let's go down the alleyway here. Don't want to get too close to the curb. Very dangerous. Wear a helmet! <laughs> As I say now as I do, but I am wearing a helmet. I always wear a helmet. It's a good idea. Good idea to wear a helmet. I mean, if it's gonna, if that's really gonna kill it for you, you know, if it's, you know, that's gonna make or break it for you. you know, if I have to wear a helmet, I'm not doing it. I'm not riding a bike. Fine. <laughs> it's your head. Don't wear a helmet. But, once you start enjoying cycling a lot, consider adding a helmet to your inventory and then consider actually using it. There are a lot of helmets out there and some don't weigh as much as others, so they're more feather light, you know, minimal, but still some protection for your soft part of your skull. Good idea. Whew. Almost to work now. I hope this was an informative video for you. Check the description below this video for more information. I am the bike vlogger. Subscribe to my channel and you'll get updates when I release new videos. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Whew.